On today's edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, we will be discussing the Florida Panthers' 5-4 to four loss in a shootout against the Calgary Flames as Jonathan Huberdeau and Mackenzie Weger made their returns to Sunrise, Florida. We are also going to discuss about the storylines prior to the game, the Florida Panthers putting their reverse retro uniforms to their debut, and we are going to be discussing the look ahead of the week, all on today's edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Your Locked On Panthers, your daily podcast on the Florida Panthers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into this bonus Saturday night slash Sunday edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Thank you for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. I'm Armando Velez, and you can follow me on Twitter at Monoman12. Follow the show account on Twitter at LO underscore FLA Panthers. And thank you for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. Don't forget to also subscribe to the other shows on the Locked On NHL Network, including Locked On NHL, Locked On Fantasy Hockey with Flip Livingstone and Stu Roden, and the newest show on the Locked On NHL Network, Locked On NHL Prospects. So, Cats fans, the Florida Panthers, this was a game that we had circled on our calendars for a very long time since the schedule got released and the trade after as well. Uh, 4 p.m., start for for this game the nhl network picking up this game as well knowing that many fans around the the nhl world want to view this game as a return of jonathan huberdo and mackenzie Weger, and of course matthew kachuk facing off against his former team a lot of former uh play a, a lot of players playing against their former teams i mean on the panther side ryan lomberg sam bennett matthew kachuk on the other side jonathan huberdo mackenzie Weger. Jacob Markstrom as well for for the for the Calgary Flames. So a lot of uh, a lot a lot of that going on for for both teams. And really, uh, let, let's talk really about the the storylines be, uh, before before this game and really how how we got here. Uh, and of course, uh, Ju- Julian McKenzie of the Athletic really put into great detail about how the day of this trade came about about Matthew Kachuk not being around his phone, celebrating his uh, brother's engagement while being out on the East Coast, keeping it hush-hush between him and his parents and his agent, who's, uh, who his uncle has to, happens to be his agent. And the the trade, uh, waiting like seven hours for the trade to become final with the league office and uh, Jonathan Huberdeau and Mackenzie Weger not knowing anything it, it, in, in between all of that too. Uh, and Bill Zito calling Jonathan Huberdeau. Then calling Alan Walsh, Alan Walsh calling Brad for a living, and then Alan Walsh calling Jonathan Huberdeau back to tell that the trade is official. And then Brad for a living going to Montreal to eat at a very fancy restaurant in downtown Montreal. I forget the name of it. And even Jonathan Huberdeau spoke about the details of what he ate that day too. And also Jonathan Huberdeau uh, speaking prior at the Panthers ice den in Coral Springs as the Flames practiced there. Uh, yesterday saying, hey, maybe Barkoff will pass it to me. Uh, Mackenzie Weger saying that he'll expect some booze from the crowd. Uh, I, I think I heard a little bit of booze on the on the television from from uh, today's game. Uh, but personally, if I were there, I wouldn't have booed for either of them. But uh, and of course, the guys uh, get talking about how they were going to get dinner uh, on, on the Friday night uh, when when they when the both the teams uh practiced on on friday after the fact so so you know it, it's it's of course those all happen all the time when you're making your uh, an appearance in a city that you used to play in and you know the 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 scenes prior to the game were almost exactly as i would expect i mean fans being up uh so close to the glass having signage wanting autographs to uh for jonathan huberto and Mackenzie Weger, of course, uh, and then them being out left out on the ice as well to get a little bit of a moment with the fans as well. And then uh, the, where 
Jonathan Huberto and Alexander Barkov meeting around the blue line near the Flames bench and then just chatting. I had to I had to take a little bit of a picture on on the TV and then post it to the Locked On uh, Panthers uh, Twitter page just for just for uh, not only content but just get in a little bit of the feels when it comes to uh, to these two who they considered themselves uh, best friends when they when they played with each other. So. It, it, it's it's a little it's a little bit bittersweet, of course, uh, and of course there there's um, there's a lot of emotion in it too. I mean, if there's anyone who has a right to be mad, it's Jonathan Huberto and Mackenzie Weger for for that. I mean, Matthew Kachuk spoke about how this was the place that he wanted to play in, but we we they in the article that Julian McKenzie posted on the Athletic, he spoke about how they wouldn't release the teams that were interested and. Pre- People would question, is that really the destination that Matthew Kachuk really wants to be in? Honestly, at this point, it, what matters is that Matthew Kachuk is a Panther, and and he wasn't traded anywhere else other than Florida. So honestly, that list of teams that uh, Matthew Kachuk put out there that's not Florida, who cares, honestly? <laughs> I, I really don't uh, as as far as that. But it, 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 it was fun. This, this was a fun game. It was everything that as advertised, high scoring, and... And, and just even though the goalies had both had a hard time with with uh, with this one early on, especially with rebound control for, from both of them, uh, they they made some timely saves when they needed to. Of course, uh, this going into a shootout and the shootout being a, a two to one result uh, in favor of uh, Calgary. So we're we're going to discuss that more in the second segment on this game and how we got to this five to four victory for the Calgary Flames over the Florida Panthers. But first, we're going to tell you all about Bet Online, and BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get all the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from football to basketball, soccer, esports. We've got it all at Bet Online. And if you love sports podcasts, and you can find these at Bet Online as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to getting your betting fix. Head to the website today or use a mobile device to learn more. Bet Online, where the game starts. Second segment on this bonus edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. As uh, as I, if you listen to any of the any of my shows last week, I did explain in one of them. I believe it was my Wednesday show uh, that I said that due to me being out of out of state and not podcasting all the time while I was out, I was going to give you guys some bonus content uh, when I returned back to to Florida. And what perfect what perfect uh, game to do a bonus episode to discuss the the Florida Panthers. And of course this being a front end of a back-to-back has a lot to do with it as well, because I wanted to dedicate a full episode talking about this game specifically. And the, the Florida Panthers, I mean, the, the, this, uh, this game for, for them really start started off really a lot of offensive zone time for, for, for the Panthers. I mean, the, it, when you look at the end of the game, I mean, this was really one of the rare games where the Florida Panthers really lost the the Corsi battle as, as far as that on five on five. It's it's usually never never uh, in in the other team's favor. I mean, when you look at the final uh, when you look at the final stats, I mean, both of them had the same amount of shots on goal. Both of them had the ama- same amount of attempts. Both had the same amount of power plays. Both had the same amount of power play goals. <laughs> so uh, th- this was this. I'm not saying these teams are identical exactly. I'm that's not what I'm trying to say, but just the back and forth. This had the this had the type of game where these players got up for this one and uh Panthers uh, attacking early uh and chances off off the post for uh Dubé, uh Spencer Knight and and Nick Richie. Rich, Richie had multiple t- multiple shots at uh Spencer Knight as well. Jacob Markstrom, uh, he had a little bit of a hard time with rebound control for for this one, and and the Panthers were really recognizing that for 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 them. I mean, for let, let's talk about the fir- first few first few goals. Uh, the the first one, the both of them actually were very identical. Uh, Spencer Knight, glo- short side, 
goes right under his glove. The first one, Radko Gudis reaches for the puck and just unable to get back in position for in order to block the shot. But Spencer Knight in that one, he needs to save that one. Uh, for for the second one, it, that which was uh, in the second period, uh, not the best play by Gus Forsling. It, it just gets right past him, and then it leads to a rush, and then Zadorov. Uh, even though there was no traffic in front of the net, Spencer Knight, that that's one that he's got to uh, to to save as well. And listen, uh, Barkov came back from from his non COVID illness, and and with Matthew Kachuk being suspended last week, even though he returned. Uh, but when the when the Panthers came back came back home, uh, the 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 Panthers haven't had the the sustainability of putting the lines that they want together. Sure, we've seen a little bit of Bennett and Matthew Kachuk, but then we've seen Matthew Kachuk back at that first line. Uh, Colin White was on the third line for most of the beginning of the season, but now we're starting to see the lines that we've been asking for. Colin White being on the top line with Alexander Barkov, Matthew Kachuk staying with Sam Bennett, two former Flames that that got to face off against their former teams. So we got a little bit of kind of what we wanted, and of course the Paul Maurice sticking with the pairing of Ekblad Forsling and uh, Brandon Montour and Mark Stahl. I mean, Mark Stahl and with with the Mon- Montour and Stahl uh, pairing. Of course, the 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 roles reduced a little bit for uh, Brandon Montour as as Aaron Ekblad uh, came back, but uh, this th- just the the high powered offense that both of these teams had. I mean, all three of the Panthers' goals were right on the doorstep, um, at least on five on five. Excuse me, uh, Colin White, of course, uh, creating the the goal right on the forecheck as uh, Markstrom was playing the puck, and then a wrap wrap around uh, goal for for the Panthers. I mean. This could have been easily a game where the Florida Panthers could have just had a repeat of uh, of uh, Thursday against the Dallas Stars, and then uh, this could have easily gone gone in the other direction. But it was a, it was a it wasn't as much as the mental errors as as the as the last uh, game as uh, as this one. The first two two uh, goals uh, once again, Spencer Knight uh, is needs to needs to save those and i'm sure he would he would he would say that he would uh need to save it but the power play let's talk a little about about the power play i mean matthew kachuk (laughs) my god he knew on that power play where he was going as soon as barkoff was at the top of the right circle getting it to matthew kachuk he knew that he was getting it to sam reinhardt right right in front of the net and Three goal, three game goal streak for Sam Reinhart, all on the power play. Six straight games with power play goal for the Florida Panthers. Yeah, it's not sure. It's an L for the Panthers, but the fact that special teams is starting to get going, uh, it, 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 it's telling me personally that the Panthers are in an okay position. They're not in. They're not overwhelming. The way, it's not overwhelming wins, but it's not like super detrimental losses. It, it, th- Thursday was a kind of special exception. Uh, you're not going to see many games like uh, Thursday, Thursday night for for the Panthers. Uh, as uh, and even right after that, Brandon Montour, right, right as as he's uh, as he's getting into the play, going to going to his left, going to a sharp angle shot, and I mean the def- even the defensemen for for the Panthers they were getting so so involved jumping up on the play as well. Brandon I saw multiple times Brandon Montour, Brad Gugudis and Josh Mahura uh, getting getting uh, getting up on the play, jumping on the rush as well. And Adam Ruzica, uh <laughs> this was the call up for the Calgary Flames when Jonathan Huberto got uh got injured and missed and missed a few games and he was the one who had the first goal which we spoke about with Spencer Knight getting it under his glove and then a, a, a strange goal where like literally half a second after Elias Lindholm wins the faceoff, goes right past Spencer Knight, and then literally as soon as that goal went in, if you're watching, if you're watching this on YouTube, you could. See, I'm gonna do my exact reaction. It, 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 I was literally like this, <sighs> like, and I'm sure a lot of Panther fans were feeling that way as as, as well as uh, there as Spencer Knight didn't really see that play at all because uh, Colin White and Gus Forsling, as they were shifting uh, towards Adam Ruzica. 
uh, blocked his view and just Spencer Knight didn't really have time to uh, react uh, as well. And you, you saw, you could see why, you could also see why that Mackenzie Weger views himself as a number one defenseman and wanted to get paid what he, he wanted to get paid. I mean, Overall, I think on on a contending team, he's be, best suited as a second pair defenseman, and he's getting paid like second pair defenseman money. So I, I think it's very fair of what he's getting compensated. Um, unfortunately for the Panthers and what their goals are and their and the and the cap spit and the cap, um, it was never it was never going to be a thing. But Aaron Ekblad had a beautiful beautiful chance right in front uh, in towards the end of the second period on, on the rush and. And uh, that was with Colin White having such a beautiful move as as he's uh, getting as, on the zone entry as well. And man, uh, Mackenzie Weger m- might have saved the goal on that one. And Matthew Kachuk uh, in the to jump to jump a little bit ahead. Uh, Matthew Kachuk gets a steal on Jonathan Huberdeau in overtime and gets a gets a leads a, leads the three on three uh, to to Aaron Ekblad to try to get it past Jacob Markstrom and M- Markstrom. Uh, avoids uh the panthers winning so there's a lot of uh former uh there could have been possible storylines on what uh what game winning goals and go ahead goals or game tying goals that could have been it's like okay this player strip this former player strip that player uh this uh so it's it's a lot of it's a lot of what could have been, like some some of it is like some of what could have been but also uh thinking okay we can see why matthew kachuk fits in with the Florida Panthers better long term than Jonathan Huberdeau cuz we saw Jonathan Huberdeau uh turning the puck over quite a few times I saw a board battle with him and Barkov and Barkov just stole the puck from him and then just uh came out of the Panthers zone as well I, I mean Matthew Chuck getting two points in this one seven points in the last three games Matthew Chuck the unicorn and in that Julian McKenzie article that we spoke about right at the top of the show Bill Zito spoke about to Brad Tree Living, I, I believe it was months before that trade, about how much he loves Matthew Kachuk. So it was, this was, I wouldn't say it was something in the making for a long time, but somewhere in the very back of Bill Zito's mind was always the desire to get him. And listen, it's been such a treat to, to, uh, watch Matthew Kachuk play for the Florida Panthers. I mean, the the game tying goal in, in the in the third period as Sam Bennett, just a, a rocket of a of a one timer from the top of the uh, top of the right circle, uh, and Matthew Kachuk is right 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 there to deflect it in. Two former Calgary Flame players giving it to their to giving it to their former team, and it's just uh it. it if you're a Calgary Flames fan and you're watching that, you can only you it, you could only uh, you can only have a, a have a sigh, but it's it's not a good one. It, it's not a sigh of relief. It's a sigh of uh, of uh, damn. Uh, the, these uh, these two former players are making making my team uh, pay. But that Matthew Kachuk, and as far as that, I don't I don't when when you think about it. What what gives you a reason that the Florida Panthers can't win this trade long term? Like at twenty four, he's doing all this. He's stripping the puck from guys, getting in front of people's faces, and he's he's screening goalies when he needs to, and and creating creating havoc right in front of the net. And just it, it, it's just it's just I'm, I'm thrilled by this trade. And listen. You could even go back to my show in July when when Matthew Kachuk was a Panther, and even prior to the trade, saying how it's it's a it's a it's a great opportunity cost for uh, for for the Panthers and another Sam Sam Reinhart, three straight games with a power play goal, just and Paul Maurice was asked after the game about how. Sam Reinhart has gotten it going, even though all three of his goals in the last three games were on the power play. And what has been, he was asked what the difference in his game was. And even though Anton Lindell doesn't play as much power play time ever since Aaron Eckblad came back, 
Um, it, it's really talked about the difference between putting Anton Lundell there. And I'm hoping, and I'm sure you guys listening to this too, is that they don't get separated. They, they, that, that you do not put these, uh, these guys away from each other because the, what, how they were able to build last, last season into this, it, it's just been incredible. And I mean, you talk about different situations for th- this team with, even when Matthew Kachuk wasn't around and even when Alexander Barkov was missing one game, you saw how Bennett was performing being a third line player. Uh, and that, that he did, he was the two C in this one as well. And even, even, uh, even though on the third goal, he wasn't the main, even though he got the primary assist, that play does not happen without Gus Forsling. Uh, Gus Forsling that faking the shot and just trying to get into the trying to get it into the low slot right on right on the right on the doorstep uh, looks like that Sam Bennett's stick does touch it so uh, a lot of deflected pucks Markstrom's out of his net and then Etu Lusterainen, uh cleans it up and Etu Lusterainen, he's three goals away from tying his career high Paul Maurice at the beginning of the of training camp spoke about how this guy is a top nine player and it's proving. It's it's proving that three players who have benefited most from Paul Maurice's system: Etu Lustranen, Radko Gudis, Brandon Montour, the three guys who are benefiting the most, and Carter Verhage. Let's give Carter Carter Verhage his uh, due, even though he performed very well under Coach Q and Andrew Burnett. But the three players to to uh, to really, as far as how noticeable they have been in their improvement, th- those three names that I just named, and I mean. The wins aren't necessarily coming at the highest of rates like they did last season, but individual play, those three have just been much improved. And there, and of course, the different styles of of defenses um, jumping up and run and gun, it doesn't. With last year's team allowed a lot of rushes the other way, but the but the but these guys, especially the two defensemen, has has just been has just been very responsible with the puck of course not giving up odd man rush is something we've talked about really all season so far and etulus terrain and it, mostly a defensive forward like we've spoken about the last two seasons even even when i first started hosting the show in 2021 i i said i love this guy's defense he draws a lot of penalties he wasn't playing as many games at the time uh but he he's just grown so much since uh since uh since he's been uh with this team and i mean that's the that's the last piece of the Trocheck trade. He's the only one who's remained with the Florida Panthers. It's just incredible to see how he's just not afraid to get in front of the net, and he's not afraid to to uh, draw penalties as well. I mean, I, I spoke a little bit about Sam Bennett. Uh, I'm not worried about him uh, taking a penalty in five straight games. He has ten points, and he has ten points in the last six. Like. Is there really something to really complain about as far as uh, as as far as Sam Bennett there? Mm, I'm 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 not I'm not too overly uh, concerned about that. Aaron Ackblad a little bit on the on the goal to Blake Coleman uh, tur- turns it over and then the, the unfortunate unfortunate pass that Michael Backlund uh, passed to off of Gus Forsling's skate to Blake Coleman. Former um, Tampa Bay Lightning Blake Coleman, unfortunate bounce off uh, Forsling skate, but Aaron Eckblad had a uh, still quite a few uh, turnovers in this one and didn't have uh, his his best game in my opinion. But he, it, it's gonna take it's it's gonna take Eckblad a little a little bit to get it going. I mean, look at Sam Reinhart; it's taken a little bit to, for him to get it going, and now he he was the main power play producer last year, and now uh, once again three straight games, three power play goals for Sam Reinhart. And the power play is getting going for the Panthers. And and listen, um, the Panthers after after loss since October 29th, they're four zero and one. So they're getting the points when necessary. As of right now, before all the games have gone final, uh, because the Toronto Maple Leafs uh, play tonight, uh, they're currently leading three one against the Buffalo Sabers. As I'm looking right now, uh, Boston's leading three one against the Chicago Blackhawks, but they're, they're still around that area where where they need to be in order to in order to contend and act, be inside that top eight necessary. 
And we'll we'll get to the first benchmark of the season when when we get there. We're less than a week from there, American Thanksgiving. But the the Panthers aren't going on major losing streaks uh since since that since October 29th. I mean, sure, they they lost they lose two straight one in overtime getting a point out of it, but it, the 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 Panthers they're 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 not they're not lo- they're they're treading water is the best way that I can say it. So as far as this team, wait, l- let's look at some individual performances that are just improving. Matthew Kachuk, great as advertised, even though Barkov can can get it going a little bit. I mean, he did tonight. Eight shots on goal. He even spoke about it after the game. It's like you know, if anyone wants to say that I should shoot more, there you go. So a little bit of pettiness from Alexander Barkov that I kind of liked as well. So. It, it, Honestly, kudos to you, Alexander Barkov, for for because he hears the noise. So <laughs> I thought that was a little bit of a uh, of a funny comment from from Sasha Barkov uh, post game on uh, after this five to four shootout loss against the Calgary Flames. But in segment number three, we are going to wrap up this post game edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Talk about the overtime period and the shootout for the Cats, and we're going to be looking at the road ahead as the Florida Panthers will be on a second end of a back-to-back. So stick it right here on Locked On Panthers. Your Locked On Panthers, your daily podcast on the Florida Panthers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Third and final segment here on this bonus edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. And thank you once again for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. So yeah, the Paul Maurice spoke about how in, if this was 20 years ago, uh, where the NHL did have ties, I've never watched. Uh, I've never watched the end, the era of the NHL where it did have ties. That's uh, post 2004. But uh, the so for. The Panthers in overtime really controlled play. Uh, the the Calgary Flames really had their their more of chances really towards the tail end of the uh, of the game. Uh, Elias Lindholm especially, and again, uh, Matthew Kachuk had a steal on Jonathan Huberdeau and and took took it took it to the Panther zone and had an opportunity to feed to Ekblad where Ekblad could have had the game winning goal and what a storyline that could have been. As with with Kachuk stealing that puck from Jonathan Huberto, but it didn't happen. The Florida Panthers and the Calgary Flames go to a shootout. The only player to have a shootout goal was Anton Lindell for the Cats, and uh, Matthew Kachuk had an, <laughs> tried uh, doing a slap shot on Jacob Markstrom, and Jonathan Huberto, even though he didn't get a goal, he, I don't think he even got a point in uh, this game. Let me double check. Jonathan Huberto did go pointless and on Saturday afternoon, but did get a goal in the shootout to kind of stick it to the Panthers as well. You knew that, you knew that, you knew that Barkov was going to get a chance. You knew that Kachuk was going to get a chance. You knew on the other side that John Huberdeau was going to get a chance as well. Uh, So it it just created so much, uh, so much uh, excitement as, uh, as, as the Panthers had headed to the shootout. So, it, of course, the shootouts are so random. So you you just never know who's gonna which goalie is going to uh, look better uh, in, in that one. But of course, Jacob Markstrom, even though he struggled this season, is a was a Vesna candidate last year. Spencer Knight uh, didn't have his best game. Uh, like I said earlier, those two goals are goals that he might want back. But you know advantage mark from in that one uh John, uh matthew kachuk was asked if that goal against the calgary flames meant anything he said no uh ryan lomberg scored a goal against the calgary flames last year and he said the same thing um i'm not sure if i believe that i i believe somewhere inside his head it means something of course they're gonna say it's just another hockey game but it it, it has to mean something for him of course it's not it wouldn't i don't think it's the same feeling for him personally 
if Jonathan Huberto were to score because Matthew Kachuk was working with the Kyrie Flames to facilitate a trade. So there's not as much bad blood for Matthew Kachuk with the Calgary Flames as there is with Johnny Gaudreau and the Calgary Flames because let's let, the Flames got something for Matthew Kachuk. The Flames did not get anything for Johnny Gaudreau. And which got Johnny Gaudreau and Matthew Kachuk will be facing each other on Sunday, which f- crazy how that works. Uh, but I, I think it means something. But if Jonathan Huberto were to score against the Panthers, of course, which is justifiable, he's he was mad about the trade, and he has every he had every right to be. But also, there's a, a sense of professionalism for this as well as Matthew Kachuk says uh, it would be unfair for my teammates, if I was still living in the past about Calgary, which is honestly a great leadership position for Matthew Kachuk to, to, uh, to find himself in and to face when talking about, about wanting to make a difference on his new team. And honestly, as a fan of this team and, and someone who covers this team as well, I, I can really appreciate, uh, Matthew Kachuk, uh, saying that because it, it's just, it just goes to show that it's like this guy really means it when he says he wants to be here. This guy it really enjoys the teammates that he has. He enjoys the South Florida as a as a region. So I mean, I mean, it, it helps that he's playing well. I mean, leading the team in points in almost every statistical category. He's been. It, it's safe to say he's been the MVP. You could argue Carter A is is the MVP as well for, for this team, but it, it's, it, it's a great leadership position for, for Matthew Kachuk to, to, to say, to, to say uh, that he, sh- he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to, uh, he doesn't want to worry about the past and doesn't want to sell and unselfishly uh, l- let his, for the team to say, Oh, this guy's thinking about his past. It, it it might be for Huberto. I don't know. I I, I he he's the one who want. John Huberto did not want to go. He did not want to go outside of uh, South Florida. But uh, I. But with the dinner that he had with Brad for living, um, it, it made him very comfortable in in the situation and the relationship. Uh, even though it's not the best right now with him being on the third line, that there's a still opportunity for them to at least make something out of it. I mean, the Calgary flames are not out of the playoff race. They're still a very great, good team and a team full of adjustments too, because losing Johnny Goudreau and Matthew Kachuk insert Huberto Uyghur and also Kadri who signed a free agent deal there. You're bringing a lot of new faces there. So the fact that they're not gelling and as many would expect them to be, it, it's 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 not a surprise, and I'm not gonna dink and dunk on 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 that just be just for the first like 15 to 20 games. Do I think that the Panthers are long term win this trade? Absolutely. I I have zero doubt in my mind that this would be a situ that this trade from that Bill Zito made will work in the Panthers' favor, especially when you consider the age factor and a lower cap hit, too. And the difference in a guy being more in front of the net versus a guy who's more on the outside as a playmaker, too. So, you know, this is only one game out of many for between these two, but for this one, it, it, means, it means a little bit uh, more definitely because it's the first. Unfortunately, the Panthers didn't come out with a win. Uh, I don't know if I would say that they deserved to win neither uh, because they never led. They were playing from behind again for the second consecutive game. But, you know, you salvage a point out of it and and you get, you again, 4-0-1 since October 29th after a loss. You're getting the points when you, when, when you need them. Uh, Florida... Like we spoke about, they're on a second end of a back-to-back tonight against the Columbus Blue Jackets, a 6 p.m. start. Sergey Bobrovsky is expected to be the starter for the Florida Panthers at Nationwide Arena. Uh, again, Matthew Kachuk and 
Johnny Gaudreau will be meeting, but it won't be. I think this will be more of a definitely a lot smoother meeting as as far as meeting former teammates because you know the two teams aren't involved with Calgary and Florida. It'll be a little bit probably more of a little bit more of an easygoing type of game for uh, as far as uh, activity. That's I guess that's the best word I could use for in in that situation when talking about uh, two former teammates going against each other, but. Uh, Columbus is a very injury riddled team right now with no Patrick Lane, no Zach Wierenski. Uh, I believe uh, Elv- Elvis Merzlikens is still uh, hurt uh, for the Columbus Blue Jackets as well. So uh, th- this this is an opportunity for the Panthers to definitely uh, get a bounce back uh, in in this one and just to at least get three out of four points. Uh, for the weekend before welcoming the Boston Bruins at FLA Live Arena on Wednesday night. The Boston Bruins, who are currently leading the Chicago Blackhawks 3-1, to and looks like they're going to be on route to 16-2-0. So I'm not, I'm not worried about the division. Um, honestly, after winning a round, it, it's business for the Panthers. Just get to the playoffs. Paul Maurice isn't worried about it neither. So... Um, for now, I'm for not for now. Let's just not worry. Let's not worry about the division. Let's just worry about continuing to not go on major losing streaks, continuing to to get the power play going, which is six, once again six games in a row. So that's an encouraging sign, despite the loss and the two Sams getting it going. Matthew Kachuk seven points in um, seven points in the last three games. So there's still great individual performances there for the Panthers that are that are part of the solution and, in my opinion, not part of the problem for uh, the Florida Panthers. Thank you once again for listening to this bonus edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. I wanted to dedicate, once again, a full episode on this game specifically between the Florida Panthers and the Calgary Flames. On Monday, we will be recapping the Florida Panthers' road game against the Columbus Blue Jackets before they return home for a two-game homestand between the Boston Bruins and also the St. Louis Blues on Saturday, right before going on a Western Canadian trip. So on on we will be having a special Friday episode all dedicating to where the Panthers are at at the first benchmark of the season so we will be having an extended discussion as well for for the cats and discussing where are they are they in good shape and we will be discussing last year's numbers as well for the cats and and this year's and see and maybe get a little bit of a pulse check as well during during that episode of the lockdown florida panthers podcast so that that's a little bit of a content that's going to be coming to you uh this week on the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. But in the meantime, if you like what you're hearing, please subscribe to the podcast to be notified every single time the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast jumps into your podcast feed. Don't forget to also subscribe to the shows on the Locked On NHL Network, including Locked On NHL, Locked On Fantasy Hockey with Flip Livingstone and Steel Roden, and the newest show on the Locked On NHL Network, Locked On NHL Prospects. Thank you for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. And for your second listen of the day, make sure to listen to today's episode of Locked On Sports Today. Locked On Sports Today gives you all the biggest stories of the days, instant reaction, big game recaps, and the take of the day. Available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast. Sarma Mondo Velez, signing off. And you've been listening to the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Where's your team? Every day.